what the Church of Scientology is so afraid of. This, this is SPTV. Hey there, everyone. And here we have also joining us, Mr. Mark Headley. Where are you, Mark? Oh, there he is. Well, I added myself right as you added me. Hey, guys. <laughs> Welcome okay, to the channel. Well, yep. Welcome, everyone. Uh, sorry to disappoint um, the attractive members of the MC Squared uh, not with us this evening. <laughs> It's yeah. just the the two brutes. Yeah. Sorry, guys. <laughs> yeah, we, we apologize. Uh, other factors intervened. So it's just us two. But we have lots of fun. And we have tons of people here already as well. We've already, already up to a few hundred people in the chat. And uh, tell us where you're coming in from, where you're watching from. And um, we can see what's going on out there while everybody shows up. You know, it takes about, I think it takes about two minutes for all the, once we go live, for it to hit everybody's messages or channel, right. email I, or whatever. I saw that. And they, and then they, yeah, see, now we're already up to Barossa, 500. Adelaide, Australia. Barossa Valley, home of the Australian wine industry. Oh, wow. Just for your information. We got Central Arizona, Ontario. Oh, that's from a poet, Brian. Um, we got Ontario, Canada, New York, Missouri, Georgia, Indiana, Clearwater, Portland, Buffalo. Atlanta, Clearwater, Buffalo, <laughs> nice. Missouri, Germany, Massachusetts. Battle Creek. Battle Creek. I wonder Georgia, how that aug is doing over there in Battle Creek. Probably not very good. Heather could let us know. There used to be a um, an organization, a Scientology organization. Is it a mission or is it an org? No, it's an org, and they bought a building. They bought the old an old Kellogg building. That's like right. back in two thousand and five or something, and yeah. it still sits there empty to this day. Wow, that's ridiculous. Yeah, it is crazy. Oh, we got a lot of, uh, got Sydney, Saint somebody Paul. in here from Sydney. Oh, uh, really? Space Coast, Florida. Oh, nice. We've been there. Denver, Mile High Hokey, Hokey, Mile High Hokey. Um, I'm going to be at the Space Coast. Jack has a, a soccer game there. In the Space Coast? A tournament, yeah. Wow. Merritt Island. Very yep. cool. Atlanta. Alberta, Canada. London. Bet you it's cooler up there than it is down here right now. Safety Harbor. <laughs> yeah, I saw that too. Aberdeen. Yeah. <laughs> nice. Well, oh, wow. Argentina. Wow, yeah, what time getting... is it in Argentina right now? I'm sure they'll let us know. Look at that. Hi from Never In. This Never In from Los Angeles. Um, ooh, we got somebody from Norway. Ooh, Townsville. Ooh. Um, well, I think we got it. it was about Netherlands, Rhode Island, Minnesota. They're from all over here. Right. It's getting wild. This is getting, uh, thank you for joining everyone, wherever you're watching from, uh, more people from Sis Sydney and, uh, Vancouver. Um, we appreciate everybody who tunes in to watch these. Um, I mean, if you guys stop watching, we'll probably stop doing them, but as long as you keep watching, we'll keep doing them. <laughs> I figure that's a good deal if we can, we can get it, you know? Okay. Well, the topic of, of this discussion today is uh, Tom Cruise and David Beckham, and it was sort of prompted by me watching the new documentary on Netflix called Beckham. I don't know if you've had a chance to see it yet, Mark, you and Claire, but... Claire watched it. Um, she just finished the last... I think it was four episodes. Four I think she, episodes, yeah. She finished the last episode last night. But um, I haven't seen it. I don't. Um, I watch too much YouTube. I don't want to watch a lot. I don't want a lot of uh, Netflix or TV anymore. But um, but uh, it's on my list. It's on my long, well, long list. It's it's really good um, and quite interesting, um, even for someone that kind of knows a lot about him and his history and his, you know his activities with Manchester United and the England football team and, you know, Real Madrid and everything, I still learned a great deal. But the fourth episode includes the interaction of him with Tom Cruise 
and then Will Smith. And uh, that's what we want to talk about because last week, and probably prompted by that show, there was an article that someone sent to me. Uh, Tom Cruise reportedly still feels taken advantage of by David and Victoria Beckham from their years-long feud. <laughs> That's now, ridiculous. How, how Tom Cruise feels taken advantage of is a little hard to, to grasp, but there is a quote in this article. Uh, I'll have this article on my blog, and you'll be able to, to read the whole thing. It's not very long. What was an issue was the pressure to join Scientology, the Beckham Powell revealed. Tom wouldn't take no for an answer, unquote. As a result, the athlete and fashion designer felt they had no choice but pull away. But the cruise insider insists it's clear Tom was hurt by the rejection. Hmm. <laughs> okay. You know, I just realized something, uh, Mike. I don't think, I think the only two people that Tom Cruise has gotten into Scientology um, have gotten out. Yeah. Yeah, the only two people he has gotten into Scientology are Katie and Nicole. Yeah. And he married both, them. And they're both SPs. <laughs> well, you know, to be fair, he did get his sisters in as well. Yeah, got, okay. I got I got to give it to him. He did get the sisters in. But, he, but the two people that he wasn't related to, that he got in, he was kind of even so, sort of related to them too. But uh, as soon as he wasn't related to them, they got right out of there. Right. Now, there is a lot of backstory and a lot of, um, of uh, kind of fascinating uh, goings on that surround this whole story. Um, that, that most people do not know about. No, they do because, not. Because it all happened when we were both still there. Right. 2004, 2005 is when a lot of this was going on, right? Yeah. Because I remember yep. we did that. Uh, we'll, we'll go on. Go, go go on with your thing. Because I know you got slides that are going to probably tell what I'm going to tell. No, I don't. I'm oh, well, I was going to say um, in 2004, that's when Tom really turned the corner. Oh, right? yeah. Like that 2004 was the, oh, I'm in this now. And I'm going to do big moment. things. Yeah, that, I'm going to do big things. That was... He, he had been recovered by Marty after the um, eyes wide shut incident that occurred where he and Nicole had basically gone off shooting eyes wide shut in the UK for a year on a very secret closed set and had fallen out of communication with David Miscavige, which caused great, great consternation. And I was involved in that. I went to London to try and find out what was going on. I cover a lot of this stuff in my book, um, but I wanted to sort of put it all together in the context of David Beckham, because in the book, it's really in the context just of Tom and what was going on with him. Um, at 2004 um, was a sort of a watershed year because... 2004, well, let me go back. In 2001, uh, Tom divorced Nicole. Yeah. And then he shot a movie, Vanilla Sky, with Penelope Cruz. And Penelope then became his girlfriend. Which is um, how he became the girlfriend with Nicole when he shot Days of Thunder. Yes. Yes, exactly. Um, Penelope was um, accepting of Scientology, but not... Uh, enthusiastic. Not enthusiastically jumping in. And, you know, I met her a few times. She is one of the nicest, sweetest, kindest, and most stunningly beautiful people you could ever possibly meet. Um, but... She came from Madrid, and her sister was a newscaster on a major TV, like nightly news in Madrid, and the effort was to get the whole family into Scientology, and particularly to get them onto the purification program. 
Yeah, I remember in manufacturing, we got um, Spanish Castilian um, lectures rounded up to send to, to make to get and brought those up to uh, religious technology center so that those could be sent out. Right. And as with the ideal org in New York, the ideal org in my in Madrid took on great significance because this was the home of Penelope the biggest star in Spain and her sister, the biggest TV, one of, or one of the big TV personalities in Spain. So the idea was if these guys are in Scientology, uh, then we will take over Spain. Spain will become the first clear country, not Mexico. Yeah. And, and I think the Madrid, <laughs> Spain, this, um, the Madrid Ideal Org, I think, was the very first one opened, right? No. Oh, Buffalo, it was after Buffalo. But Buffalo was just kind of like a Buffalo weird... and then San Francisco. Yeah, but they were they were and then and then Madrid, uh, then Joburg, and then Madrid and New York. Um and uh, you know, the other ones have different reasons for them. Madrid was uh greatly influenced by the fact that Tom Cruise was dating Penelope Cruz. Yeah. So the opening of the Madrid org was in September of 2004, the opening of the new ideal org premises. And Tom Cruise famously showed up to, to uh, participate in that opening. Here you can see him speaking yeah. and he actually delivered his speech in Spanish. Yeah, and didn't he also jump up on the stage? Oh yeah, he jumped instead, instead of going, of up going the stairs, around the stairs. He, he jumped. leaped up onto the stage with his sunglasses on, and then big did the big dramatic reveal of his steely blue eyes or whatever color they are. Yeah, it was uh, super weird. It was the beginning of of Crazy Tom Cruise. <laughs> it was the beginning of Crazy Tom Cruise. Um, it was. Um, it was very strange because by that point, Penelope had broken up with him. By the time yes. the org opened, that's right. Penelope had actually broken up with him. Yeah, she was gone. <laughs> she gone. <laughs> and um, although her sister and her mother and father, I think, attended the opening, they did wow. attend the opening. Wow. But this um, this opening event was an interesting experience because immediately following that, I happened to be standing with Tom and his sister, Leanne, who was his public relations uh, person at yeah, the time. Yeah, it was Leanne DeVette at the time, right? Right, yeah. After he had fired Pat Kingsley for telling him uh, and stop going along with Paramount to stop talking about Scientology. Okay, that's a whole nother story, also in my book. And this next story is also in my book, uh, or in in some considerably more detail. But Tom looks over to me and says, "Can you believe Leanne cannot find a girlfriend for me?" And I was like, "What?" Um. His sister uh, I didn't is even a know bad, what to say. His, his sister, sister is, is a, a horrible a, pimp. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, madam. <laughs> madam. Leanne. Leanne. Leanne sucks at being a madam. Yeah, or uh, or a setup artist. Uh, yeah, I mean, it was the most bizarre thing. And at that moment, Miscavige walked into the room and said, what are you guys talking about? And Tom says, well, and he explains. Okay, subsequent to that is the story of Nazanin Boniadi, who became Tom Cruise's girlfriend. Um, uh, uh, there is an extensive article about that in Vanity Fair that goes into all the details, but it was the beginning of this effort to find a girlfriend for Tom Cruise, and when Nas didn't work out, he eventually ended up with Katie Holmes. I wasn't there when that happened, so I have no idea how that all went down. But we, Mark and I, both know that there were interviews being done at Celebrity Center constantly by uh, Greg Wilhair and other people to find 
suitable paramours for Tom Cruise because he couldn't find them for himself. And it was being done under the guise of an audition. Yeah. And it wasn't very it was being very it was it was being portrayed as we want to audition you for a Tom Cruise project. And then right. they would interview the the, the female <laughs> actress and they would uh, they would just ask them a lot of questions about themselves. And then they would also ask them where they were on the Scientology bridge and what were their thoughts about Tom Cruise and what were their thoughts about David Miscavige. And then those interviews, which slash auditions were then being edited at golden air productions into reels and they would be vetted by between greg and darius darius will here was greg's son who worked in the talent he was over the talent department of golden air Productions, so he was the one cutting the videos together and um and even i when i saw them i'm like what are we doing we're now casting for tom cruise's movies and and darius is like no 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 it's a project for rtc and then even the only way i knew how what it was is i mentioned to claire i said yeah we were doing these weird auditions for um some movie or something and claire goes oh that ain't for a movie that's for tom cruise <laughs> to be his girlfriend and i was like what you got my guys because i was pissed i was like you got my people working on finding tom cruise a girlfriend we got better shit to do you know <laughs> this is a bunch of bullshit i'm cutting together final cut reels for tom cruise's girlfriend reel right well you know uh it got uh weird it, it really did and hold on i'm just trying to pull up another document here um which one? No, I'm just putting it in. I'm putting it into the queue. Oh, um, perfect. We had uh, from that opening in September, we went straight to St. Hill. From and the Madrid opening. From the Madrid opening in okay. September. We went straight to St. Hill um, and did the IAS event. And that is the event where Tom Cruise got presented the freedom medal of valor and here the uh, a still from that video yeah. of uh him and dave with the steely-eyed glare mm. salute uh short tom and even shorter dave uh, and they did their shake off too like yeah. when he got up there they do that bro <laughs> <laughs> bromance uh shake shake off like no uh, no i got a bigger oh, I, got a, I got a heavier grip, grip. no i got a heavier oh. grip no i got a double hander uh shake no i got a double hander shake too now we got a bro hug out okay oh my goodness and uh, and apart from the fact that in this event tom cruise claimed that david miscavige was the greatest man on earth and he the had leader. met the leader of, of leaders, leaders and and Dave was the leader of leaders. And on the other side of the equation, the video, which is the, the infamous black turtleneck video, which I will also put up, but the video about Tom Cruise is like the over-the-top uh, butt-kissing about how he is the greatest disseminator in the history of Scientology. He's introduced Scientology to billions of people. Billions. Over literally. a billion people. And so because he had done so much to disseminate Scientology and got so many people into Scientology, he was given the, the Flavor Flav version of the IS Freedom Medal. It's, you know, like this big everybody else's is this big and it's got like diamonds and rubies and emeralds and all sorts of shit all over it and there's only ever been one and there only ever will be one it was uh it was a moment where uh it, it was actually a moment where a lot of scientologists got very pissed off a lot of sea org members got very pissed off like yeah he when is, he said the most dedicated scientologist i know we're like bitch i've been here for, i've been here for 14 <laughs> years and i'm giving you 120 hours a week for for chump change and this dude that just showed up is the most dedicated scientologist he literally just showed up right 
he hadn't been doing diddly squat. He hadn't done anything since, I mean, he audited me in the 1990s and then just disappeared. We never right. heard from him. And it was like, oh, he was a scient. We all knew he was a Scientologist, but he wasn't telling anybody about it. Right. Exactly. But, and this sort of goes to the point of, uh, Tom Cruise, the greatest disseminator in the history of Scientology, had been involved with the biggest names in Hollywood for many, many years. He had already done, I guess he'd already done two movies with Steven Spielberg by then. Um, well, he did He did um, Minority Report. I don't know that he had done um, War of the Worlds at that point. Oh, Maybe yeah, you're right. War that came in 2004, 2005-ish. Yeah, you're right. Yep, you're right. But War either way, it was 2004 and five. But he had done a mo movies with Steven Spielberg. He did uh, Far and Away with Ron Howard. Yeah, and there was a huge effort to get Ron Howard into Scientology. Ron Howard was brought to the Gold Base and wined and dined. And then I was sent to L.A. to meet with his partner Brian Grazer to disseminate Scientology to him. He had, I mean, Cruz had been with all sorts of, you know, from Dustin Hoffman in Rain Man to, you know, at, like almost everybody who was a big star, Cameron yeah. Diaz and Jack Nicholson, Jack Nicholson and all sorts of people. And he had never disseminated to anyone. He had never gotten anybody into Scientology. Except for his Except for, Except for his wife, Nicole and <laughs> Penelope ish. Yeah. And Katie ish. Well, yeah. Katie was writing knowledge reports, so she was in. Yeah, that's exactly <laughs> right. She was in. And so was Nicole. I mean, yeah. Nicole was on her OT levels. Yeah. Briefly. Yeah. <laughs> uh, not so much Penelope. Penelope never really took the bait and, no. and never really. Uh, I bet, you those, I bet you those compact discs we sent her are still in the shrink wrap. <laughs> as most as most Scientologists who have those <laughs> are, they're discs. still in the shrink wrap. Exactly. <laughs> you can buy them on eBay used, and they're still in the original <laughs> shrink wrap. <laughs> exactly. Like the the big box, the outside box is still shrink wrap. Inside is also still yeah. shrink wrap. Yeah. Everything's still shrink wrapped. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, um, so there was a, a big, big effort to get David Beckham and Victoria into Scientology. And Tom Cruise was sort of given the job. And when you watch this, this documentary about Beckham, you'll understand why. To people in the United States, it's not very... Um, understood just how how transcendent uh, football is outside of the U.S. Yeah, and and how fanatic people are, and you know, David and Victoria Beckham were probably the most recognizable people on earth. They even talk in the documentary about the Sun newspaper in the U.K. sending reporters all over the world to find anybody that didn't know David Beckham. And they finally found one man and he was a sheep herder in Chad. Wow. <laughs> That's wild. <laughs> so they, they were incredibly, incredibly well known. And it would have been the, the coup of all time to have managed to get them into Scientology and then promoting the fact that they were in Scientology. Yeah. Um, so we, you see in the documentary, Cruz showing up. David Beckham got transferred from Manchester United to Real Madrid. Conveniently, another Madrid connection and... You see in the in the documentary, uh, Cruz showing up to watch the game, Real Madrid game with Victoria. Yeah, and it's like the big schmooze. Yeah, and this was um, 
it, it sort of culminated in after after his tenure in Real Madrid from 2003 to 2007, he went and signed, David Beckham went and signed with the LA Galaxy of but, Major League Soccer. Before you talk about that, though. Yeah. When, right before I left, I left in January of 2005. Right before I left, I was um, I was the one who set up all of the networking and fiber and a bunch of other stuff at the International Headquarters of Scientology. And so I was just perusing through Dave's personal photo uh, server. And um, <laughs> there was a ton of pics of Dave and Larice and uh tom and and the beckhams and in like uh like private boxes or, or at the you know at a match or something like that so they were dave had also participated in some of these little schmooze fests that was going on there because it was there was pictures of him at in the stadium yeah so it wasn't just tom it was a tag team i know they were, they were both trying to get him yep they were exactly Anyway, okay. so then he gets so then fast forward to two thousand seven ish seven, and you you under, you see in the documentary that when the Beckhams came to Los Angeles, they were um, fated with a party, a welcome party, hosted by Tom Cruise and Will, Will Smith. Smith, Tom's other failed uh, recruit. <laughs> 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 yeah, exactly. Um, although Will Smith got a little further than some of the others because they started that school. Open that school out in Calabasas, in a Scientology, a school that used Scientology. Um, uh, L. Ron Hubbard's study technology, as he calls it, right? To look up words in a dictionary and make shit out of clay and don't do things that are out of gradient. Right. Okay. So let me just tell you something else that happened. And I'm going to show you this picture. But uh, I, I mentioned that Ron Howard was brought to the int base to try and schmooze him. Well, there was a, <laughs> a soccer pitch made at the int base. And a professional I don't mean, one. I don't mean just a bit of dirt with two goals, uh, one at each end at the right distance. No. A fully fully laid out, irrigated uh, with sprinklers and special grass and uh, the, a the special mower next, uh, with a special mower and a single person assigned to care for it. The sports fields I see. <laughs> the sports fields I see. In charge. This was done so that David Beckham would have a soccer pitch to go run around on when Tom managed to persuade him or Tom and Dave managed to persuade him to come to the int base. And it was like a sales pitch. Yeah. Like, like look what we, we got in it. Okay. <laughs> you want to put it up? Yeah. Okay. This, down here in the yeah. bottom right hand corner, you can't see it very well, but I've got an arrow there. This was the only photo that I could find that sort of showed it in any, any fashion, but you can see that, this grass on the soccer pitch where is the arrow like, is where the arrow is is the perfect green grass everywhere else is just the grass that grows and it's sort of mowed by a like a tractor yeah uh, and it's got those tractor you know mowing quick and dirty lines. it's like an x-wing fighter where the the the, the things <laughs> land exactly. down and it, but and, um but yeah. this this soccer pitch was like nope it was perfection it was the, the, it, it looked like if you went to a professional soccer game in England or at, yeah. in Madrid or whatever, what that soccer pitch would look like. Yeah. And, and no one ever played soccer <laughs> on it. No one ever used it <laughs> because it was reserved for only David Beckham. But David yeah. Beckham never showed up. Now, I also have a circle above that on that photo. Oh, yeah. And I remember that, that circle well. <laughs> yeah, me too. That is what used to be the original running program track. And which, which the only place they have that now, because they disbanded it at the end base, the only place they still have one of those 
is in Clearwater in that big uh, building down that big brand new building they built down in Clearwater. Right. Now and that's for the running program. What do they call it? Don't they have a, a stupid name for cause it? Cause resurgence. The cause resurgence <laughs> rundown. You literally run around a pole for all day, every day for months and months and months until you really, re, you, uh, you achieve. And you pay money to do that. Yeah. Well, if you're not, well, I didn't have to pay money for it cause I was in the C organization, but they Me somehow are getting generally. people to pay money for this down in Clearwater. They're paying them tens of thousands of dollars to run around a pole. <laughs> well, what's so bizarre about the running program is the only instruction you ever get is keep running. Yeah. That's it. That's what you're told. Keep running. The way yeah. out is the way through. Just keep running. Yeah. And you can do the thing like as many times as you want. It's crazy. It, like this thing supposedly restores your abilities as a Thetan and turns you into this incredibly powerful, causative, resurged individual. And yet, uh, once you're done, you can come back and do it again. And, <laughs> and now say, I'm re incredibly causative now, and then do it a third time and say, now I really am incredibly causative. I mean, it's such a joke. It's weird. The, the only th thing that I ever found very interesting about the cause of surgeons rundown is that the ant base is, was piloted there for years and years and years, for maybe uh, decades before it was actually um, released in Florida. But um, the Sea Org members were the only ones who had ever done it. And they did a study of all the people who had escaped from the uh, property at one point. And like 98% of them had done the running program. And I was like, well, yeah, you're, get, you're getting us in shape to run right the hell out of here <laughs> because I've done it as well. So I thought, yeah, I, I mean, it, that we're keeping up the tradition here. But um, I, I, do, I will admit I was very, very fit after running around a pole in the middle of the desert for two months and, um, and also very tan. But, um, yeah. but yeah, it is definitely a weird thing. And it was another one of those things that was, it was never, um, it w didn't have proper, uh, policies or, um, L. Ron references. Hubbard references. It was just this weird, um, thing that was written. Do you know who that was written by? Yeah. You, it was, was it written by LRH? Yeah, it was. It just wasn't an issue. It was, a, it, was just, it was just a dispatch. Yeah, it was just like a carbon copy of a letter or something, and you're reading it, and you're like, this is the weirdest thing I've ever seen. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Anyway. Uh, so that was right. The running program was right next to the Dev David Beckham, uh, like, bunny rabbit trap that they left for him in the middle of the <laughs> soccer pitch and the football pitch. <laughs> I could just see, like, they put a cage in there with, like, a carrot in the middle, like, come a on. A big net over the top. Come <laughs> on, David. Come on. Look, we got a soccer pitch over there. Look, there's a, there's a football in the soccer pitch that you can go and get, too. Right. Okay. And this then brought me to another interesting uh, topic with respect to this, which is if you think it is bizarre to spend tens, maybe more than tens of thousands of dollars. Oh, it was hundreds a, of thousands of dollars, Mike. Yeah. I, I, I'm just not really, I don't have much information about how much those things cost, but it's a lot. Whatever. <laughs> yeah. Okay. It's like a company that you don't just hire anybody. You hire the company that right. does that to come and put it in. Right. But if you think it's strange that that tens of thousands of or hundreds of thousands of tax free dollars are being used to build a soccer pitch to try and bunny trap David Beckham, you don't know the half of the shit that goes on. Because if there is one person where money is no object in Scientology, it's David Miscavige. But there's actually a second person where money is no object, which is Tom Cruise. Providing it's something that David Miscavige is doing to seek to impress him. And in that vein, um, one of the people that worked for David Miscavige on these special projects that he would have done to um, butter up Tom Cruise 
was John Brousseau. And John Brousseau, JB, otherwise known or known to everybody as JB, um, escaped in 2009 or 2000, 2009, I think it was, 2010 maybe. Anyway, and had a lot. Uh, you're gone mute. We talked about that in the last video. That was um, John Brousseau. Um, the, the FBI is the one who set up John Brousseau to come stay with us in Burbank. And he, when he left, he had, I want to say, thousands of photos of all the stuff he had been working oh, on yeah. for, for Dave and Tom Cruise. Yeah. And, and I have a bit of a treat here because I'm going to show you some of these and explain a bit. Um, <laughs> because some of this stuff is so over the top. And the first three photos are probably the best of the lot. So I'm going to start out with them. Okay. Uh, uh, okay. Tom Cruise, um, David Miscavige had a, a van that he had decked out for him. It was this black van. Ron Miscavige Sr. talks about it. It had it had um, what's that what's that bulletproof stuff in the that you wear? Kevlar. Kevlar. It had Kevlar uh, lining all the walls, and it had TVs and special seats and stereo system, and like it was decked out uh, it was, bulletproof glass windows. It was so heavy between the Kevlar <laughs> and the bullet. Uh, proof windows and all that stuff that um, they had to redo the entire chassis and suspension and drive all the stuff that needed to stop and make it move had to be beefed up to like school bus uh, size <laughs> because it was so so heavy right okay but but that was done and then Tom was going to get a, a Ford Expedition like a big big uh, you know, SUV. And so it was uh, <laughs> set up that this was going to be done under the uh, direction of JB at Gold. Because he had done the, the DW, the name of that van was DWFM, um, was the license plate of that van, um, which uh, don't F with me. And um, so he had just finished that. So then he got he was like, oh, uh, I got the guy that can make these for you. Yeah, exactly, which is how most of these things went down. Like, okay, I'm going to show you some of this, and then we'll tell you some other things that happened. Yeah. Okay, so <laughs> this doesn't look much like anything to do with a Ford Expedition. That is a burl root. That is a root of a tree that burl wood comes from and this was purchased in order to make the trim for this ford expedition for tom cruise this lump of tree root was converted into pieces of trim that are solid burl it's one piece one piece of solid burl that was used throughout the interior of this SUV. And they made the, it, like, not only was it like the shelves and this counter and stuff like that, but even like the consoles where there were buttons and stuff, you can see it on the back of the bench there. Right. They made this, like, a, a custom countertop out of that big thing that you saw on the tractor there. <laughs> Okay. No, talking uh, about you're talking about hundreds and hundreds, maybe thousands of hours of Sea Org members spending their time at Golden Era Productions. That the guys that would be making sets or making props or whatever, doing Sea Org stuff, were making this stuff custom for Tom Cruise for free. Right. And here we go. Here is how it looked when that piece was installed or those pieces were installed. This is actually Tom Cruise's throne in the back of the expedition. And you can see it's I got think it was an excursion, by the way. Excursion is the bigger one. Expedition is the smaller one. Oh, I thought, oh, uh, yeah, it is the biggest one. The biggest yeah, the Ford SUV that you, you could buy. Yeah. My mistake. You're the Ford man. I am, and also, um, I, now we all know, the secret's out, guys. 
Tom Cruise likes dentine fire, that, that yeah. really spicy cinnamon <laughs> gum. And it looks like uh, Bubblicious is the other one in there. So he's a big Bubblicious. And I don't know about those glasses, though. Those glasses look pretty funky. I'm not sure what's going on with those. Those look but, like some seriously big glasses. They do. But the, the, he's got like a, a mouse and a, a CB radio. Isn't that a CB radio, Mark? Or is that just a control for all of the audio? I think one of them might be a DVD player, and I think the other one might be a nut. It looks like just two different head, head units. I'm not sure. This was a long time ago, so they didn't have the fancy stuff we have now. But look at all the controls, the shade controls, the window controls, all that stuff. And I, and I still can't get over. Like, th this is, um, like, for people who don't understand, uh, John Brousseau is like an expert expert craftsman like the fact that he could envision this and then make it out of that giant piece of wood um but um it's insane it's it's thousands of hours of work to make all this look like this i know i know i'm i'm just trying to find some some more things here i couldn't fit them all in so do you have any of the hanger stuff yeah i do hold on uh I'll, do, I'll, I'll riff while you're telling that we the a lot of the guys that would work on this stuff with John Brousseau were um, people that worked for me when I was the uh, pre-production director in the uh, in the cinematography department. Um, but we had a guy named Ron Somerville, a sets guy, another sets guy named Adam Lewis, uh, a props guy, a German. Uh, I think he was Swiss German. I can't remember exactly. His name was Walter Wilkins. He was a mad scientist of, of uh, prop proper expertise and he could make the most detail down to the most detailed things up to you know really cool flags or you know banners or whatever but um the sets and props uh crew i want to say for off and on we're like a little tom cruise swat team they if they if something was needed like one time they just disappeared to his hangar in um, Los Angeles. I can't remember if it was Van Nuys or if it was Burbank. I think Santa was, Monica. Santa Monica Airport. Yeah. And um, he had a hangar there with a whole bunch of planes that he would keep. And they ended up going down there and decking out that whole hangar with these big giant flag banners. Yep. Um, Here we go. Yeah. There, there you go. Are. So the, the Sea Org members at Golden Air Productions made those, um, I don't know what you want to call them. They're either kind of like banners or yeah, signs. Um, signs. I mean, th those guys are the same guys that made the signage for the ideal orgs. Like, this stuff looks like the signs you see in the ideal orgs. And, but they didn't just do that. They, oh, that's the bus. Sorry. Wrong yeah, I was going to say that's the c custom. Yeah, look at that. The, the, they built models. Kiss well, Me Kate. That's I, the name of this plane. I think it's a P 51 that Tom Cruise owns. Yeah, they made and, a miniature of it. And John Brousseau made that model to put inside the hangar. And this, hang on, I got another one too. Sorry for being so clumsy. They won't allow you to have more than 10, so. You know, you could just make a PDF and then just put them all in that one thing and you can just slide through it. Oh yeah, that would have been smart, huh? I'll show you that. You just make one and then you just go next, next, next. Yeah, next. I got it. Um, do you want me to uh, well, remove the ones we already showed? No, no. I, okay. I just don't even know where that one is. There's another oh, okay. one of the office that uh, office space that is. Um, oh, in the hangar. The hangar. In the like, hangar. Yeah. And I can't find that right now. But they also uh, built um, and oversaw the construction of his motorhome that uh, was actually built in Portland or somewhere in Oregon. And Yvonne, what's her name, was there and back constantly supervising the production of the, the motorhome for Tom. And uh, JB Custom built this motorcycle or painted this motorcycle. Uh, it, I mean, just in addition to this stuff, all of the stuff that were hired for Tom Cruise's household and his Odin Productions, his production mm -hmm. company, were all 
hired, vetted, approved, and installed by RTC. You know, there's a whole bunch of spy files about Odin Productions. Yeah, I About do. when that DVD got leaked, they thought somebody at Odin Productions might have leaked that DVD. The, the right. uh, Tom Cruise birthday um, event, because they had given them like six copies and they could only find five. So it was like, <laughs> it was a big RTC investigation. <laughs> But but the, the Steve Marlowe and Luigi would go if Tom Cruise bought a new house when he bought a home in in Palace Pacific Palisades and then one in Beverly Hills and then in Telluride they would be dispatched out there to install all the AV equipment in the home. Yeah, the TVs, the speakers, the movie room. And they would get all the same stuff that Dave had. And sometimes we would use stuff from the base would go into these studios. Some of the equipment that we had at Golden Era. And, you know, that's true. There's an, actually an article, I think it was in Rolling Stone, about how we made the audio recording rig for Far and Away when he shot that with Nicole, they had this whole portable sound rig called the Clear Sound Rig, which is L. Ron Hubbard's technology on how to restore all of his horrible recordings that he did. And, um, and Tom Cruise had a Clear Sound Rig that he would record his own dialogue on his movies. And I think that lasted for like one or two movies until the whatever the Hollywood industry audio people were like, we ain't using that no more. You're gonna, we're gonna use what we always use. We ain't using your piece of junk uh, Scientology audio setup. And then that's ended up what we, we ended up getting it back at the Ant Base and we had to take all the Tom Cruise labels off all the equipment and um, so that we could use it and just go on and use it ourselves to go on location and shoot, shoot audio. Right. And um, it wasn't just uh, David Beckham and Tom Cruise. Uh, Will Smith also got the treatment. Oh, the, I didn't Christy, know that. Christy was, uh, has a story about her time in South Africa. Yeah. Will and Jada were flown to South Africa to see Education Alive <gasps> at work in South Africa. Before they opened the school? I'm not sure which year it was. I guess it was yeah. probably before they opened the school, but as a sort of a pitch, and there was this, whole thing set up they were they went on they were lined up for a safari and all these presentations and these parties and dinners and blah, blah, blah. rena weinberg was flown down there to host them a whole bunch like an advanced team was sent to set everything up to make sure it was all perfect everybody in the org was like oh and by the way when i was talking to christy about this she yeah. said they got an order in Johannesburg, Johannesburg, yeah. That if anybody ever saw Tom Cruise, they were to refer to him as Mr. Cruise, yeah. Tom Cruise never went to Africa. <laughs> this was like this was permeated throughout the entirety just of in case. the Scientology world. Just in case. Just in case Tom Cruise accidentally shows up. You better call him Mr. Cruise. I mean, well, we did have that at the Ant Base. He was going around the Ant Base, and this was in the, I want to say this was in the early 90s when he was going around the Ant Base and getting a tour and just, he was kind of just let loose on the property. He could do, yeah. where, he could go wherever he wanted. And he went into somebody's office and the guy, his name was Tony Cifarelli. So we <laughs> called him TC. He, he was referred to as TC. And he went up to Tom and said, Hey Tom. And he said something like, my name's, my initials are TC too. Anyway, <laughs> the next muster that we all had, um, Larice, Dave, Dave's, um, whatever, what was her, her, his communicator or his assistant type person. She came to gold muster. COB calm. COB calm and said, if anybody on this property runs into Mr. Cruz, you call him Mr. Cruz or, or sir. sir. You do not call him Tom. You don't call him TC. You don't call him Tommy boy, you know, like whatever. <laughs> and, the, and everybody was like, wow, something must've happened. And then right after we went back to work, we're like, yeah, it was Tony, Tony, <laughs> it was Tony. Tony fucked it up for everybody. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah. Well, the great um, efforts made with these people 
all came to zilch. You know, uh, Will Smith was probably the closest that anybody came to accomplishing anything. Uh, yeah. And that wasn't really, he never really would come out and say, I'm a Scientologist. No. He would well, they never say, did. I use I use uh, L. Ron Hubbard's study technology in my school because we found it works or something. Yeah, but then at the same time, they're like, we're fans of, uh, I mean, Jade is the best. She's like, we're fans of many parts of many religions. Like, we just yes. take what we like from whichever one we like. And, we and do many we parts want. of many men. Yeah. <laughs> Apparently. <laughs> She's a man eater. I think that Hall and Oates song was written a little too early. <laughs> yeah, in any event, and the the world's greatest disseminator, Mister Tom Cruise, has been an utter failure, and, and you know, it's it's one of these. Um, the emperor has no clothes things in Scientology. Nobody ever says anything about this. Nobody ever dares breathe a word. And fifty about- percent of his preclears are SPs as well. <laughs> So he's got a bad, he's got a bad Scientology <laughs> record. <laughs> but he audited two people in the Sea Org. One of them is an SP. The other one's not. That but, would be uh, you. That would be me. Yeah. yeah. So he's yeah. not a good Scientologist. People. He's a bad one. <laughs> so so we go back to the Tom is is uh, what was the word that they used? I I got rid of that thing now. Tom was upset about the the rejection of david beckham like what it's ridiculous it was uh but the cruise insider insists it's clear tom was hurt by the rejection <laughs> yeah tom was not i don't i think tom was hurt that he didn't get into scientology he wasn't trying he that's the weird thing about this is they don't i don't think Tom Cruise is going to hang out with you when you're Tom Cruise's best friend. He's a workaholic. He's doing his thing. Yep. And if he's nearby, yeah, you might hang out for a little bit. If you're real lucky, you'll get invited over for a good old game of hide and go seekage. But um, <laughs> like Leah was, Leah, didn't Leah go to, didn't she say that in her book? She went over to the house to play hide and go seek. <laughs> Yep. And he was all mad because his hot cocoa wasn't made exactly. It was like exactly I mean, some something like that. I'm it, telling you. It's a bizarre story. It does. It sounds like when she said he plays hide and go seek, like like I'm up for all kinds of nonsense, you know, with the kids <laughs> and stuff like that. But you ain't gonna catch me playing no hide and go seek. First of all, I'm pretty big. It's gonna be hard for me to hide. But right. um, but that just sounds like really weird to me that you got Tom Cruise and Katie Holmes running around playing hide and go seek somewhere in Beverly Hills. Like that just sounds really, really bizarre. Right. Yep. Okay. So let's I think. Take Tom some... Cruise wasn't going to be friends with David Beckham. Tom Cruise was trying to get David Beckham and and the and the uh, the other spice one in the spicy one into Scientology. Right. Exactly. Okay. So let's take a few questions. We're going to keep this one short tonight. We are going to shoot for an hour. Ooh. Seven Ooh. minutes. It's a marathon. Okay. Japan of Green Gables. Love that name. Question, Mike. Why didn't you and David Miscavige have to change your names when you went over the rainbow to gold base like Marty, Matt, and Jackson did? Well. That's a good point. It is a really good question. Um, that primarily happened at La Quinta. And I was at La Quinta. And when I was at La Quinta, if I went outside the property, I had to use, uh, I can't even remember what I had, John, because that's my middle name. Oh. Um, but it didn't ever stick. Okay. And there was, uh, there was a bunch of people who their names didn't stick. Yeah, I their, used to be called fake... Max for a while, and, and that didn't stick. It only on the radio, people called me Max. Right. And I'm sure Miscavige had... Uh, an outside the property name there too, but it didn't stick. So okay. I, I don't know. Some people it did. Jackson, Matt, Marty, yeah, all those. Leroy. JB. Well, JB was <laughs> Still. always JB. I, mean, I didn't know his real name for many years. When somebody called him John, I was like, who's John? They're like, JB's John, you dumbo. I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> I, don't know. I just all, no one. John. 
It's Jean. actually J E A N, I think. That's right. It's Jean. Jean he's, Brousseau. He's, he's a French Canuck. Canadian. Yes. Okay. Let's see what this next one is. Oh. That's the same. Oh. Here, I'll get rid of them for you. Thank you. What happened to Claire? I don't know. They Jeez. bailed on us. I know. The, the, they're probably uh, off having, they're probably off talking. Yeah, they literally are chatting on the phone and we're in here doing all the work. Right. Okay. Calico 26. Wasn't the Madrid opening the last public appearance of Shelly? Shelly knows Tom and Tom acts like she doesn't exist. Well, no, it was not the last public appearance of Shelly. No, I mean, she was at numerous she was at New IS York. events after that. She was that. at the IS event. She was yeah. in New York. I think there was a New Year's event right after that. Um, yeah, it wasn't the last time. Maybe the last time in Europe. Yeah. You want me to do? You want me to rip through these and you read them? Yeah. Okay. Good. Are there any Scientology orgs in Alabama? Doubt it. Roll Tide, y'all. Yep. Roll no, Tide. No Scientology orgs in Alabama. By the way, did you see that Caitlin Collins? I did. When we were saying when we said us. Roll Tide in that video, and that somebody made a short of it or something. Yeah, Yashar did, and she. Yeah. Called, he said, "My worlds collided because she." got him to be a uh, Alabama fan because of his elephant. Yes. Fixation or yeah. interest or whatever you want to call it. So, yes. Okay. Do you think TC DP never in, do you think TC displays his COS medal next to his Oscar? I'll wait. He's never won an Oscar. <laughs> you know what? That's a, um, and, but the women he has been with, um, um, they've not only gotten kids, they've not only had kids, but they've also won Oscars after they leave Tom Cruise. <laughs> just, a, just, just a coincidence. I'm just saying it just happens. It is a coincidence, yes. SV John 26, question, does TC know he was exposed to blue asbestos on the free winds? No idea. No, I don't think anybody does. I don't think anybody really understands anything about that because it's not what Scientology wants anybody to know. Ah, Mrs. T. Rush got that pronunciation. Mm -hmm. Serious question. How many millions of dollars has Admiral Shortpants flushed down the toilet on useless projects that went nowhere? Tens <laughs> of millions. Maybe even Maybe hundreds even of hundreds. millions. Like you know, you... He, he lost $30 million before he even got started. His first, his first big investment was $30 million. Uh, was it Oklahoma oil wells? Oklahoma oil wells. Oklahoma that oil was Elron wells. Hubbard's money. Well, that's true. That was that was the old man's money, and um, yeah, I would say it would be in the hunt. I would say if David Miscavige has just purely wasted money, it, it's at least in the hundreds of millions of dollars. Well, you know, um, just the Scientology Media Productions boondoggle is huge amounts of money for a thing that was completely unnecessary and duplicative of everything that already existed at gold yeah and paying direct tv to keep scientology tv on the air i don't know how much that is costing but it must be a huge amount of money every year because they're not keeping that shit show on direct tv without making money and there's no ads yeah so well, that I means think they just pay they just scientology is just right. paying yeah they are paying whatever the general ad revenue would be for <laughs> a for a channel to appear on direct tv it's that doesn't have any return on investment that's zero nothing i bet you they don't even get anyone into scientology through that channel like that actually comes in and does a course and even if they did get somebody come in and they did a five dollar course that's not paying for a million dollar uh channel fee from direct tv right okay salty beach girl larry mark that video I, I emailed you of the guy walking along the base is it normal for them to put the blinds down and hide yes. oh yeah that's the, absolutely that's if the there drill. is a protester on the highway um everyone gets a call or it goes you know goes out on the pagers or beepers or however they spread the word <laughs> at whatever year 
period it is, they say, close the blinds and stay inside. And everyone has to stay inside with the blinds closed until you get the call, okay, it's okay to go back out again. Correct. Oh, Mrs. T again. Yep. P.S. How can I volunteer for the Aftermath Foundation? I contacted you guys years ago, but never got a response. Okay. If we you filled out the form on the Aftermath Foundation website where it says volunteer, we now have your name. And if there is something that we need or a person needs, or we have you in our directory of people to contact. But there isn't always someone in your area or something that needs to be done in your area. So, you know, if you haven't heard from us, it's just because we didn't have anything for you to do at the moment. But don't think that that moment may not come sometime in the future. Yeah. If you emailed us or if you signed up, you're on a database that we have. And if we need you, we'll call on you. And we are getting um, sending emails to the people that are in our list now so that we can kind of verify and keep the list updated. So um, we're, we're getting better with that. We, we just had w way more reaches than we expected and way more um, emails and messages than we could easily handle when we first started out years ago. Right. Mean Mr. Mustard sleeps in the dark, shaves in the dark, drinks safe paper. I don't think Tom needs, you know, I was talking to Christy about this today. Yeah. You know the words to every Depeche Mode song. I know the words to every Beatles song. I, I believe it. <laughs> I don't think Tom needs the help with money. What a crazy world COS is. Glad you all got out. Oh, no, he does not need help. No, with it's money. ridiculous that he, out of everyone in the world, he's the guy that the Sea Org are doing free stuff for. This is being done to stroke his ego and... It, it, you know, Leah has talked about this a number of times on various shows and podcasts and whatever that we have done, that the, the level of um, <laughs> treatment, I don't know what the right word is, uh, butt kissing, uh, ass licking, whatever, that happens with Tom Cruise is beyond anything that anybody could possibly imagine could be experienced. It's like beyond the, uh, you know, the king of a country or a Saudi prince or something. It's beyond the, the, you know, the biggest, you know, music like Taylor Swift and they don't get the sort of stuff that, Tom Cruise gets showered upon him and yeah. it's not the money. It is the power. It is the, the snap of the fingers. Like this will be provided to me magically. Like I have a, a magic lantern that I can just rub. And yeah. if he rubs Dave the right way and says, I need a this or a that, or I was thinking about doing X, Y, and Z, or is thinking about getting a new motorcycle or whatever. Don't worry. I've got you. Yeah. It's Any chance David Miscavige can show off for Tom Cruise, he's going to show off and it's going to be the biggest show off. Like no one's going to outdo him. It's going right. to be the biggest uh, show off that, that anyone's ever seen. <laughs> yep. Jean Marie Pollock. Does Tom Cruise have to study Scientology every day or is he getting all the benefit without the pain? <laughs> uh, he's getting all the benefit without the pain. I you know what, what's funny sure. is I read that and I thought that did he have to pay? I don't I thought right. he even had, did he even have to pay? Um, How does that work? In theory, yes. But Matt talks about what happened when he was the Treasury Sec FSO. Yeah and being forced to give free services to everybody and him writing up and saying, Hey, I'm the treasury sec. The Hubbard policy says free service, free fall. I ain't doing it. And he got smashed. Yeah. So, wow. Who knows I didn't even think about that. that. Belinda string. What a douchebag TC is for using the seal for his free labor. I'm sure he didn't pay any bonus extra to these people. Oh, no. No, definitely not. Jane Ash, question. If TC's staff is all C of S, 
Are they SEOG? Does he pay them or does the ESO? If the church is paying tax-free dollars to give him slave labor, that's another thing for the IRS. Okay, his staff are not, necess not necessarily all Scientologists. Yeah, they're the just majority vetted. of them are in his household. In his production company, they are not. But they are screened by RTC still. They get background checks done on them. They have PIs investigate them. They do all sorts of stuff to make sure that they're okay. Yeah. Um, there's SEOG members that are assigned as sort of the quote, liaison people who are the handlers. Uh, you know, for a while, Jessica uh, Fesh, uh, Davis, whatever her name was, Jessica was Katie's handler. And she was yeah. a SEO and she was with Katie 24-7 to make sure that every need of Katie was taken care of. Well, that was when they were trying to schmooze her into being a Scientologist. Yeah. Um, and, and, Tom, and Tommy Davis was Tom Cruise's Tom's, sort of handler for a little bit, too. Right. And and so they are. There are Sea Org members who are assigned to spy on and oversee them. There are Scientologists, usually the the sort of principal people in the Odin productions are Scientologists who are monitored by those people in RTC. I mean, the two, for many years, Michael Dovin and his wife were the kind of, you know, main people of to in Tom Cruise's life, and well, they reported directly to David Miscavige about everything that was going on. Yeah, that whole time period from the early 90s, like 1990, 91, all the way up till when he divorced Nicole, they were installed. Michael Dovin and Andrea Dovin were installed in TC's camp, and they were reporting up to Dave as much as they could report up that entire time. Um, while Tom and I, and I doubt that Tom or Nicole knew any of that was going on. Yeah, maybe. I remember maybe. them coming to the property and getting sec checked and getting ethics handlings at the base, Andrea and Michael, because they weren't giving enough info. They weren't giving us all the goods, you know? Right. Okay, another one. <laughs> Mrs. T again, I'm an accountant. Your answer hurts me. <laughs> <laughs> Ugh. Yeah, it does. Ivana Tinkle. Oh, you better get you better get to that. <laughs> Van Dinkle. What's crazy is that Scientology has a pro soccer pitch, but the LA Galaxy had a sloppy second field from the football team. <laughs> Embarrassing. <laughs> yeah, it's true. They've got a nice stadium now, though. Yeah, they sure do, right? Yep. Trixie out. Does Dave Miscavige really believe all the Scientology stuff, or does he know it's all bullshit? I don't know. We get asked this question often and I always answer it basically the same way. I don't know that it matters one way or the other. He says he believes it. So is that really different than anybody believing it or not? I I don't know. I the only think thing that, that I would say is that he doesn't play by L. Ron Hubbard's rules all the time. He kind of goes a little free with how he does it. So I tend to believe he plays along like he believes it so everybody else will but he knows it's his show now and he doesn't have to do anything he could he could literally say whatever he wants he could say hubbard left me a secret document no one's gonna challenge him to say the document's not a secret document nobody knows right exactly cat matijets matijets what does dm get from tc why the love bombing oh access access to the most important people in hollywood access to tony blair's government in the uk access to bill clinton bill clinton access to oprah yeah all sorts of people and that is an enormously important to him 
I have to tell you this story. This will give you a very good um, idea of David Miscavige. When he went to the birthday party, I think it was um, Oprah was throwing a birthday party for Missy Elliott. And John Travolta was there and Oprah and, you know, all these people. And Bill Clinton was there. And when he came back to, from the party, someone said, sir. And, he, and David Miscavige is the one who told us this story. He says, uh, I walk into the HGB and somebody says, sir, is it true you met Bill Clinton? And uh, Dave Miscavige goes, no, Bill Clinton met me. That's David Miscavige. <laughs> he okay. has a very inflated uh, sense of his importance. Yeah, this is the last one, Ivana Tinkle. Okay, Ivana Tinkle, conspiracy time. Do you think Scientology was also trying to break up Victoria and David like what happened with Tom and Nicole? No, I do not. In, in, in fact, I think that Scientology and David Miscavige were desperate to get them both. Yeah, they needed the if, package. If you if you watch the, doc, the Netflix documentary, you will see that at the time, Posh Spice was like... like the biggest thing she was the taylor swift the, i mean the spice girls were the taylor swift of their time and combined david and victoria were there is nothing that is like that now i mean i guess travis kelsey and and taylor swift are sort of in that same league now yeah, but Travis Kelsey is not as big a deal as David Beckham was. Yeah, it would have been Taylor like Taylor Swift is. is yeah, it would have been like Jay Z and Beyonce if they could have got Jay Z and Beyonce. It would have yeah, been exactly. like, "There's no way you're going to do better than that." That's right. like, we're good, we're good. So, so they they wanted them both. And yeah, they they need a new they need somebody new because when Tom bails or when this whole thing falls apart, they got nobody. They I mean, Michael Pena and Jenna Elfman are not gonna be able to keep this thing going. Elizabeth Moss. <laughs> and Elizabeth Moss. That's right, I forgot about her. And what's her name? <laughs> Michelle Stafford. You know, we never talk about Michelle Stafford. We gotta do a thing because she gets to fly below the radar. Nobody's calling her out. She somehow she's got a really good agent or good PR people. They're keeping her <laughs> they're keeping her flying below the radar on the Scientology craziness. Even though she yeah. may she may have been in longer than any of these people. Yeah, but she's not like a household name. Well, she's a soap opera star in the States. Yeah, but nobody really knows who she is. Yeah. You know. Well, that's all the questions we have. So uh, that is, and we so, did. We didn't get it to an hour, but we did pretty good. We didn't go too long. We went twelve. Yeah, minutes. yeah, an hour and twelve minutes. That's pretty good. That for us, that's amazing. That's great. Yeah, that's shortest time ever. I think it is. <laughs> <laughs> we do have a. Um, we have another video coming up, and um, oh my god, I was gonna, I was gonna kind of set it up in this one, but. Um, Shoot, I wish um, I think I need Claire to bail me out. I was supposed to say something on this, but um, I don't know. Anyway, I guess I missed my window. We're gonna do a What's video. The video. We're gonna do a video about somebody that we broke out of the international headquarters. And um, but then we were gonna do another video too, and I can't remember what the other one was. I don't know why I got mind wiped all of a sudden. Um, but. Um, See what happens to us when our wives aren't around? I know. I was. I can't even remember. I had this great idea about a video, and I said, well, I'm going to have to set it up a little bit on the uh, video that I do with Mike, and then I totally got my one. I don't remember what it was. <laughs> anyway, but we're going to do a video of a breakout uh, probably next week um, of somebody that we broke out of the international headquarters. And then, um, yeah, we've got all kinds of good stuff that we're going to uh, be doing stuff on. We do have a... Um, uh, a Scientology story coming out with uh, Dylan Gill tomorrow. And then... Um, uh, Dylan Gill, who was for many years at the Church of Spiritual Technology. He was at the secret... Super secret uh, vault diggers. Yes, <laughs> and I do remember. Okay, so um, there was... In the Spy Files, we have a Spy Files episode coming out on Thursday. And in that Spy Files episode... We're going to talk about a guy named Eric Geisler, uh, affectionately known many, to many of you as Eric Spiesler. And um, Eric was a double agent working for the Office of Special Affairs as a spy. And he um, 
We know that he continued to be a spy and an operative for the Office of Special Affairs because he eventually ended up doing some witness tampering in the Danny Masterson trial, and he was listed as a witness to be called in the trial. He wasn't eventually, he was never called. They didn't need to call him because they pretty much already had what they needed. But we're going to do a spy file. You're gonna, there's a spy file video coming out, Scientology spy files video coming out on Thursday, and it is the original document that shows how he was activated as a spy for the office of special affairs and we're going to go into that document in detail right so we got that coming on thursday all righty well thank you all for uh joining us thank you all for watching uh like and subscribe if you have not liked and subscribed it's right there the button's right there it's for right good there. just say and like and then at subscribe. mike rinda subscribe i don't see any buttons right there they're right there on the YouTube. They're there. On we don't the see them, but when they're watching on YouTube, oh, okay. that's where so they are. Right there. Just right there. Okay. Thanks. See you, see you all next time. Bye, Bye. guys.